Okay, the next topic in line is gene expression. I'm going to do it. Okay, so now we're going to talk about gene expression. And gene expression includes um, the copying of DNA to RNA, followed by the translation of RNA into protein. So now we're dealing with this, the copying of DNA to RNA, and then eventually it will be translated to protein. This is the overall, and it's called gene expression. It also has another name called the central dogma. I mean, look at that. Anything that's called the central dogma, oh my God, it's on the exam. That's a, that's a hefty name there, okay? Okay, so the interesting thing is this. The way I drew it is a general way that, just a quick explanation of what it is. But what happens in prokaryotic cells is slightly different than what happens in eukaryotic cells. What happens in uh, prokaryotic cells is actually gonna be mimicking this. In prokaryotic cells, like bacteria, you're gonna have DNA transcribed into messenger RNA and then translated into protein. So this is gene expression in prokaryotes. And the interesting thing is the whole thing happens in the cytoplasm. Okay, what about eukaryotes, like you? You do something different, however. We're gonna do DNA. It's gonna be transcribed into what's called pre-mRNA. Means before the mRNA. Then we're gonna go through something called RNA processing. Now you'll have the mRNA. Then you'll have the translation. And then you'll have the protein. So it's more involved. That's in eukaryotic cells. Now, in prokaryotic cells, everything happened in the cytoplasm. But in eukaryotic cells, this step, transcription and RNA polymerase, happens in the nucleus. Why not in the nucleus of prokaryotic cells? Because they don't have a nucleus. That's why. All right where translation happens in the cytoplasm. Are we okay so far? So if we look at it, you'll realize something. Bacteria, they don't have RNA processing. There's no RNA processing in bacteria. There are three RNA processing events that we have to worry about here. And that is number one, five prime capping. In eukaryotic cells, you have to cap the five prime end of the RNA. And what that is used for, it's for ribosome binding. See, the translator is the ribosome. For the ribosome to bind to mRNA to translate it, the mRNA has to be capped. It's sort of like, before you leave the house, put your cap on so the sun doesn't hurt you. Well, it's the same thing. Put the cap on so that the ribosome can recognize it and make protein out of it. Watch what happens if, if I don't put the cap on, the ribosome cannot make the protein. It doesn't know what, I don't know what that is. So it recognizes this is a, a, an mRNA when it has the cap and you put the cap at the five prime end of the molecule. The next thing is splicing. In eukaryotic cells, a lot of genes actually have exons, and then in between the exons, you have a region called, so the E is the exon, so exon one, two, three, four, for example, and in between, it's called intron. So now you're going to have intron 1, intron 2, intron 3. 
In eukaryotic cells, we have this. In prokaryotic cells, they don't have introns. They're, there's no introns. So there's no splicing in prokaryotic cells because they don't need to do splicing because splicing is the removal of the intron. Not of your DNA molecule. You don't want to do that one. See, what happens is this. You copy the DNA directly, and that's called the pre-mRNA. So this is your DNA, and I'm going to copy it. Watch this. That's transcription. Now, we're, again, we're talking about eukaryotic cells because we're dealing with exons and introns. Transcription will do this. Exact copy of the DNA is just in RNA form. That's it. That's the only difference between the two. But if you have four exons here, you have four exons here. If you have three introns here, you have three introns here. The only difference is this is DNA and this is RNA. That's it. That's the pre-mRNA. When we say pre-mRNA, what does that mean? It's before processing. Before you added the cap. <coughs> before you remove the introns, which is the splicing. So what happens is, there's a splicing machinery. It will literally do this, you guys. It literally does this. It picks up the RNA, and it goes like this to it. Like that. So imagine that happening. I pick up the RNA like this. What's going to happen to the exons? Can you imagine that? If I take the RNA and do this to it, in the intron region, the two exons are going to do what? They're going to come closer. Do you see? And then you're going to have like a, a bubble like this. Watch. The exons are going to look like this. They're going to be really close. Oops. And then the in between, the intron will look like, and then you're going to splice, splice, and put them together. So the two exons come close to each other, and you cut, cut, and you put the two exons together. So at the end, you're gonna have all the exons together with no introns in the middle. So all the exons are gonna come together, no introns in the middle, because you don't need the introns. And that's called splicing. Removal of the introns is called splicing. You don't need to do any of that in bacteria, because they don't have introns. The last processing event is called the addition of a poly A tail. Addition of poly A tail. Which means basically, I'm going to be adding a whole bunch of adenines at the end of this. Adenine, 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 and so forth. A poly A tail. It kind of looks like a tail, but it's made up of adenines. There's a function for that one. It, the poly A tail will, will direct the mRNA out of the nucleus. So the poly A tail is for the mRNA to leave the nucleus. So everything has a job. Let me do it again. The cap tells the ribosome, hey, you need to translate me. The splicing removes these intervening sequences that would otherwise make no sense. So for example, let's wait, let's say this gene is catalase. Catalase is when you put the exons together. This gives you catalase. With the introns, I don't know what that one gives you, but it's not catalase, do you see? To get catalase, for example, if this was the catalase gene, catalase you get out of the exons coming together, all four of them, for example. That means you must remove the introns. What happens if you don't remove one of the introns? Well, I know one thing is gonna happen. You're not gonna get catalase. But what will you get? I don't know, but it's not catalase. And you'll be in trouble, of course. The poly A tail tells this mRNA, okay, you're ready to leave the nucleus because translation happens in the cytoplasm. All of this stuff here happens in the nucleus. Once it reaches this level here, you look at it, it's already gonna be capped. It's gonna be spliced. It will have the tail on it. Now it's ready to leave. Now it's this. 
mRNA. It's been processed. It will leave the nucleus, attach to the ribosome, and get translated. Now, the ribosome is the translator of the message. So this is mRNA, which is messenger RNA. It has the message, make catalase. The ribosome is the one that's reading the message. Mm, oh, he wants me to make catalase. So the ribosome is made up of special RNA called ribosomal RNA. But then there's another RNA involved. Watch this now. There's another type of RNA involved called the tRNA. That little T stands for transfer. Obviously, it's transferring something. Am I right? Right? Mm -hmm. Good. This one is the ribosomal RNA. The ribosomal RNA is the scaffolding of the ribosome. But the tRNA is called transfer RNA. It's transferring the subunits of proteins. What are the subunits of proteins? Oh, God, thank God. I was about to pass out. Amino acids. Very good. So they're loaded with amino acids. You're scaring me, guys. Amino acids. How many are there? 20. 20, yeah. So these are delivery trucks of amino acids. So look at this here. Now listen, listen to this and catch this, please. A little confusing. The mRNA is the one that's being translated into a protein. The ribosomal RNA, which is the scaffolding of the ribosome, and the tRNA, which are the delivery trucks of the amino acids, they're not being translated into a protein. They're being used as tools during the process. This is equivalent to you knowing how to build a shelf. Watch this. I know how to build a shelf. That means the information is right here. That's my messenger RNA, the information. But for me to build a shelf, I need the tools. These are my tools. This is my hammer and that's my screwdriver, you see? I am not saying that my hammer is becoming a shelf. No, no. Or my screwdriver. No, no, I'm just using them as tools. So all three types of RNAs, if you're paying attention with me, please, and not to your phone. All three types of RNAs are involved in translation. This one, this one, and this one. But only messenger RNA is being translated into a protein. The other two are used during the translation of the mRNA, but they themselves are not translated. Are we catching that? A little confusing with that one. Let me do it again. The mRNA is being translated into protein using the other two RNAs as tools. But the R ribosomal RNA and the transfer RNA, they themselves are not translated into anything. There's no such thing as Ribosomal RNA protein. You don't make protein out of this one. You don't make protein out of this one. They're just delivery trucks and, and scaffolding RNA. So, if we make a list here. mRNA, transcription, translation, yes, yes. Follow this again. Ribosomal RNA, transcription, yes. Translation, no. Because... There are ribosomal RNA genes. You have genes for ribosomal RNA. So we have a ribosomal RNA gene that you need to be transcribed to make the ribosomal RNA. But then it stops there. You don't make, you don't translate ribosomal RNA. This is what I'm trying to tell you here. mRNA is transcribed and translated. Yes, yes. Ribosomal RNA, we have genes for ribosomal RNA. I mean, where else do you get the ribosomal RNA? You have genes for it. So we have the genes for ribosomal RNA that are going to be transcribed into ribosomal RNA, and then that product is going to be used as the, as the scaffolding of the ribosome. Done. We also have genes for the transfer RNAs. So the transfer RNAs are going to also be transcribed. Yes, but they're not translated. There's no such thing as transfer RNA protein. 
questions.